Here's another example of a question where you're supposed to figure out these two molecules are enantiomers, diastereomers, or the same. So why don't you try it for yourself? Press pause, work on it by yourself. When you're ready, press play. We'll go through it. Okay, so an example like this is one of these reasons why I think that doing bond rotations to, to try and figure out whether two molecules are superimposable or not is a real pain in the butt. So instead of doing it that way, Let's do it through what we've been talking about earlier, which is to, to first of all, look at the connectivity. And then number two is calculate the RS and then the, the double check for symmetry, which we don't need to do 95% of the time, but it still does come up. Okay. First of all, let's have a look at the connectivity of each of these two molecules. Make sure that the connectivity is the same. So one, two, three, four, we've got four carbons. Carbon two is attached to a chlorine, carbon three is attached to an OH, and this is a Fischer projection, of course, another reason why it's gonna be a little bit more time consuming to try and superimpose these two molecules. Well, we've got a Fischer projection. Uh, now, we could number it the same way on the molecule on the right. However, it's uh, a little easier just for connectivity purposes to see that one, two, this is not IUPAC numbering, um, just carbon two, notice that we've called carbon two here is a chlorine, chlorine here, carbon three is an OH, carbon four is CH3. Okay, so the connectivity here is the same. Okay, so these cannot be, um, they're not constitutional isomers. Uh, they are isomers of some kind or they could be the same, but they're not constitutional isomers. Okay, the next thing to do is to figure out R and S for each of the stereo centers. And of course, that means that we gotta figure out where the stereo centers are. So hopefully you can see that each of these molecules has two stereo centers and we're gonna point each of them out. So here is stereo center number one, here's stereo center number two. Remember in a fissure, the arms come out to hug you. So on the side, these are wedges. And so if you look at the priorities here, um, chlorine is going to be highest priority. Uh, the hydrogen is going to be fourth. The carbon, which is a carbon here, uh, which is attached to O, C, and H, is going to be higher priority than a carbon attached to H, H, and H. Okay, so that's priority two. This is priority three. So if we just go through the priorities here, one, two, and three, just ignoring four for the moment, notice that it goes clockwise but H is in, um, H is a wedge. Because H is in the front, it's gonna be the opposite. So it's actually counterclockwise, which makes it S, okay? So this is S. And for this OH here, we've got priority one, two, three. So that goes um, counterclockwise, but again, the H is in the front. Uh, fish, H is always, or the, um, the side groups are always pointing out of the page in a Fisher projection. So instead of counterclockwise, it's actually clockwise, and that would make it R, okay? So this is, the stereo center here is R. So S and R, okay. All right, so let's have a look at the next molecule, the one on the right. And again, it might help to kind of draw in the the implicit hydrogens here, just to make it a little bit more clear. We've got uh, atom number priority number one will be O. Um, priority number four will be hydrogen. Um, and then again, we've got a case of CH3 versus CHCLC. So um, hopefully it should be clear that this one should be higher priority than the carbons attached to only three hydrogens. So one, two, and three. Here it's actually kind of easy because the hydrogen's in the back. So as we trace a line between one, two, and three, it's clockwise. And clockwise is R. Okay. And then we have another one, which is carbon two. We have priority one, which is our chlorine. Priority two, which is the carbon attached to the OH. Uh, priority four will be the hydrogen, priority three will be there. So let's just erase some of these numbers to make it a little bit less confusing. 
Okay, so going from one to two to three to four, that's gonna go initially gonna go clockwise, but because hydrogen's pointing out, it's actually gonna be the opposite, which is counterclockwise, which is S. Okay, so uh, if we look at the carbo, if the stereo center where the chlorine is, this is S, and the one where the OH is, this is R. Okay, so R and S is actually identical. Um, R and S is identical for these two molecules. These are therefore completely superimposable. Okay, they're the same. Two molecules that are superimposable in chemistry, those are the same molecules. Okay, so that is the answer to this question. And again, highlight the, 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 the useful thing about this method is again, you don't have to go through all the work of, of taking the Fisher projection, converting it into line wedge diagram, and then rotating it the right way and see if it, if it superimposable or not. Um, it's just a lot easier to be able to just look at each stereo center. First of all, after you check the connectivity, just look at each stereo center and see uh, how those stereo centers relate. So it's really ultimately the relationship between the stereo centers, whether they're R's or S's, which will tell you whether they're enantiomers, diastereomers, or the same. And here we didn't need to double check for symmetry because um, it's it, there's no chance of them being a meso compound here. All right, hope you found this useful.